I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long range exploration of space. And none will be so difficult or expensive to accomplish. Neil Armstrong, the first man to walk on the moon, was born in Ohio on August 5, 1930, to Stephen Viola Armstrong. He was the oldest of the three Armstrong children. During his early years, Armstrong discovered a love for flying, which began when his father took the two-year-old Neil to the Cleveland Air Races. Armstrong took flying lessons while still in school and earned a student flight certificate on his 16th birthday. Only a year later, he began studying aeronautical engineering at Purdue University, which led him on a path towards the US Navy. After serving as a naval aviator from 1949 to 1952, Armstrong joined the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics in 1955. And for the next 17 years, he was an engineer, test pilot, astronaut, and administrator for NACA and its successor agency. National Aeronautics and Space Administration, commonly known as NASA. During his time at NASA, Armstrong was a project pilot on many pioneering high-speed aircraft, including the hypersonic aircraft X-15, which has a top speed of over 4,000 miles an hour. Armstrong transferred to astronaut status in 1962. He was assigned as command pilot for the Gemini 8 mission which launched on March 16, 1966. During the mission, Armstrong performed the first successful docking of two vehicles in space. All of this prepared Armstrong for the most important space program of the century, the Apollo 11 moon landings. In 1968, Armstrong was offered the post of spacecraft commander for Apollo 11, which was to be the first manned lunar landing mission. He accepted the post and alongside his new team began the training and preparation necessary to complete the mission. Saturn V rocket launched successfully from the Kennedy Space Center on July the 16th, 1969. The world watched with anticipation, fear and awe as the astronauts' rocket vanished from sight. 30 minutes later, the crew on board performed the necessary maneuvers to separate from the spent rocket stages, extract the lunar module and head for the moon. On July the 19th, Apollo 11 passed behind the moon and fired its service propulsion engine to enter lunar orbit. A few hours later, on July the 20th, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong entered the Eagle lunar module and began their final preparations for descent. They were low on fuel and Armstrong was determined to touch down at the first possible landing site. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Eagle landed at 17 minutes past eight on Sunday, July the 20th, 1969. The astronauts took a few hours to prepare the necessary equipment before opening the hatch and climbing down the external ladder to the surface. That's one small step for man, one 
As commander of the mission, this gave Neil Armstrong the distinction of being the first man to land a craft on the moon and the first to step on its surface. Armstrong and Aldrin spent about 20 hours on the moon before returning to the Apollo command module with 46 pounds of moon rock. Their walk, which was televised, drew an estimated 600 million viewers worldwide, making it the largest television audience in history. The three men returned safely to Earth on July the 24th, 1969, and were welcomed home by then-President Richard Nixon. After a thorough medical assessment and debriefing, they rode in ticker tape parades through New York and Chicago to celebrate their achievement. Armstrong was a recipient of many special honours, including the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the Congressional Gold Medal, the Congressional Space Medal of Honour, and the NASA Distinguished Service Medal. Shortly after the Apollo 11 mission, Armstrong announced that he did not plan to return to space again. He was subsequently appointed Deputy Associate Administrator for Aeronautics at NASA headquarters. In this role, he was responsible for the coordination and management of overall NASA research and technology work related to aeronautics. He was also appointed Professor of Aerospace Engineering at the University of Cincinnati, a position he held between 1971 in 1979, where he took on a heavy teaching load. His students considered him a good teacher and a tough grader. A quiet and humble man, described by his family as a reluctant American hero, Armstrong kept a low profile later on, staying out of politics and mainstream public life, although he did participate in some interviews and television series over the decades that followed. Neil Armstrong passed away on August 25th 2012, following complications resulting from cardiovascular surgery. He was buried at sea. NASA Administrator Charles Bolden praised Armstrong's courage, grace and humility, issuing a public statement which concluded that, as long as there are history books, Neil Armstrong will be included in them, remembered for taking humankind's first small step on a world beyond our own. Could you describe your emotions as regard that prime human emotion of fear? Uh, do you harbor any fear, or, would, or how would you describe your attitude just before flight? I wouldn't uh, say, uh, Walter, that fear is an unknown emotion to us. Uh, fear is, uh, is uh, characteristic uh, particularly of uh, of uh, a knowledge that there may be uh, something uh, that you haven't thought of and feel that you uh, would might be unable to cope with. Uh, I think our, our our training and and all the all the work that goes into the preparation for flight uh, does uh, everything it can toward uh, erasing those kinds of possibilities. And uh, I I would say that uh, as a crew uh, we. Uh, we, among the three of us, really have uh, no fear of launching out on this expedition.